Hello and welcome everyone to this new video in which we'll build a statistics app from scratch using Python's TK Inter package. Our goal is to build a product that will look somewhat similar to the interface on the right hand side. So let's get started. As someone wisely said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So far, we only wish to build a statistics app, but we do not know how and what functionality this app is going to offer. For that, we need to define some requirements and work on the design aspect and then write the code to complete the final product. Let's define some requirements. We'll keep things simple here, but you can modify the same process and build a more refined product following the same steps. First, let's talk about the data part. The input data can come from a database, in which case we need to write some code on how to access the database. In this video, we simply allow the user to load a CSV file from a local directory. Once we load the input data, we want to generate statistics like mean, median, and you can add as many items as you like. The user should be able to select some or all of the statistics for computation. Then we should be able to compute the selected statistics for the input data. After that, we should be able to see the generated statistics in a table or in a graph format. The user should also be able to save the figures and the final requirement is that this app should be built using Python's TK Inter package. Now that we have defined some requirements, we know what kind of application we want to build. Let's look at how are we going to achieve this goal. Let's look at the app design and the project structure. This is the design we'll follow. We have a panel to display plots and an entry widget and a button to load the input file. We have two list boxes and buttons that allow selection and deselection of the statistics we want to compute. Then we have a panel to display the computed statistics in a tabular format. The bottom row contains options to select columns for plotting and select plot types for display and an option to save the plotted figure. Now let's look at the way we structure our statistics app project. We create a virtual environment and then install all the required libraries and packages in the same environment. The app directory contains the source code for the utilities and the GUI application. The assets directory contains images, icons, and fonts. Data directory typically contains database, JSON, or CSV files. But as in the GUI design, we were using a file dialog to select a CSV file from the local machine. So CSV data can be read from anywhere, and it is not restricted to this data directory. Test directory are used for writing tests during our code development. However, in this video, we won't be writing any tests. Then we have a main.py file, which serves as the entry point for our GUI application. We have decided that the app should be able to read from a CSV file. This is an example of a CSV file with column names and their corresponding values. We'll use pandas library to read this CSV file. You can also check a previous video from my channel Den of Learning titled Learn Pandas by Solving Problems. In this video, I explain some of pandas functionality by solving a few data analysis problems. So please feel free to check this video if you don't know how to use pandas. We write all the statistics functions like mean standard deviations, percentiles, skewness, and kurtosis in the helpers.py file in the utils subdirectory of the app directory. We then generate a func map 
which allows us to quickly get the corresponding functions and compute the statistics and return in a formatted line which we can display in a table. In the assets, we keep the icons and images. We will use these for the apps icon and images for buttons. As decided, we'll be using Python's TK Inter package to build the GUI functionality. To explain the code, we'll start with the entry point. We create the app instance and then use the run method to open the app. In the app class in app.app, .app, we start the main window by specifying the title, its size, and the options whether we allow the window to resize or not. In the run method, we set up the GUI structure and then start the main loop, which puts everything on the display and responds to user input until the program terminates. Now let's look at the main window class, which is called in the app.py to run the statistics app. We first load some necessary packages and also some utilities we wrote in app.utils helpers.py file. And some custom widgets, base frame, list frame, text frame, and some of the file input and output functionality. Then we set some parameters for these widgets display. For example, how much padding we'll use in each side of the frame and how would the frame panel appear, whether as a sunken surface or as a raised surface. A frame, if you don't know, is a widget that displays as a simple rectangle and these help to organize a user interface. We'll create multiple frames to contain different elements like entry widget to load a CSV file, list box to select, unselect the statistics and to show histograms or different plots of the input data. We then set the path for the assets we'll be using in our user interface. The main window class inherits from TK class and takes three key parameters. The title of the window, the size of the window, and whether we want to allow the user to resize the window. Then we create the file menu with a single item, which is quit, and which when pressed, closes the app and the window. After that, we have a create frame structure method to create multiple frames, starting from the main frame, which will contain many child frames that we will organize later so that our app looks like the desired product. We set the icon for our app using icon bitmap. This is how the base frame class looks in the widgets.py. It inherits from TTK frame class and takes mainly the parent container as input. We can also specify other parameters to change the behavior or display of this frame in the args list or in the keyword arguments dictionary. To generate child frames of this base frame, we use create child frames method. And we can also create child of a child frame using the get frame where container will be a child container. There are also two other functions, save underscore figure and get underscore file name that use file dialog from TK Inter for user's input on the input file or the output file, which are required at the time of file loading and when we'll try to save a plot. Now let's see how we write the functionality to load file. This will include a label widget and an entry widget and a button widget. A label widget displays text or images that users typically will just view but not otherwise interact with. In this case, we'll display text, select an input data file in CSV format only. An entry widget is typically used to create input fields. Here we use the state equal to disabled to restrict user interaction 
and only use this to display the file name that user selects. The button allows a user to select the input file and load the selected file which is done in the callback function self.load underscore csv. In the callback function, we get the file name using the get underscore file name function in which if you look at the code on the left hand side, we ask the user to select a CSV file. And then we'll use tkinter's geometry managers to place these widgets appropriately. We use two list boxes to select and unselect the statistics to be computed. The move to the right and move to left callback takes the selected items from either of the list boxes and place it in the other list box. Then we use the get underscore statistics with line formatting function to compute the selected statistics and format it as a string to be displayed in a tabular format. For plotting, we then create two combo boxes. A combo box is a widget which combines an entry with a list of choices. We are creating two so that we can also plot scatter plots between two columns of the input CSV file. And this is how we can create histograms and scatter plots. The base plot method adds or checks if canvas is available and sets the axis labels based on the selected column from the combo box. In the plot underscore histogram callback, we call the base plot and then plot the histogram of the selected column from the data. And then use the canvas draw underscore idle method to request a redraw of the canvas once control returns to the GUI event loop. Finally, the setup method creates the full GUI structure, that is, we set up the menu, create frame structures, and other widgets like column selectors and plot buttons. At the end, to show all of these widgets nicely and in a more organized way, we configure the rows and columns and assign different weights, which controls the width of a column relative to other columns. Now that we have seen how we started with the initial structure and wrote the code, let's now run the app and see if it's functioning as desired.